Hey, Viola. Hey, Pam. I hear there's a relationship between vitamin D and opioids. Is that true? Wow, what haven't you heard about vitamin D? Let's find out more on today's Medical History Mystery. So you can't open your phone, open your computer, your email, your newspaper, if that's what you do, and not read something about vitamin D. Vitamin D is like everywhere. What's the scoop? So vitamin D has been touted for so many things. It's even hard for me as the pharmacology dude to really get my hands around how many things people have said you can use vitamin D to treat. So let's start with what we do know, okay? We do know one thing for sure that we humans can't make vitamin D, that the only way we can actually make it make it is if we expose our skin to UVB radiation, okay? So we can't make it any other way. We need sunlight to make vitamin D. That's what we do know. Now, whether or not vitamin D is implicated in, well, I've heard, this is what I've heard so far. Vitamin D can be useful in treating COVID-19. There's really not that much data to back that up. There's some data, but there's not a lot of data to suggest that you can either treat COVID-19 with vitamin D or even offset or, or avoid COVID-19 with vitamin D. Although that doesn't stop people from using large doses of vitamin D to try to do just that. Uh, vitamin D and depression, more data on that than I think uh, I would say lends me to believe that maybe there is indeed a, a link between vitamin D and depression. And we know that because of the way seasonal affective disorder affects certain people. So again, we could say exposure to sunlight, vitamin D, okay, that could work. Uh, vitamin D is implicated in uh, poor wound healing. So vitamin D deficiency, poor wound healing and uh, inability for uh, the body to fight off infection. Again, not much data on that. If there is data, I haven't seen much of it. So when it comes to vitamin D, I'm kind of skeptical because I think it's a great supplement. I think it does good things for us in the, the areas that we know, but I'm also a little leery because it, it's been touted and doing so many other things that there's very little data to support. And I'm just curious and, and I'm often worried that our patients are taking large doses of vitamin D thinking they're doing good for themselves when in reality, they may be affecting their kidneys and they may be, again, vitamin D being fat soluble, uh, stored in our body for a while. And so that can lead potentially to vitamin D toxicity. Interesting. Well, what about vitamin D and opioid use? Yes. Now, again, I am that guy that likes to look at all the data before I actually go out there and say, hey, guess what I found out? But I just found this study from Massachusetts General Hospital pretty compelling. So it basically said that, according to their study, that vitamin D deficiency amplifies the craving for and the effects of opioids. That was both in lab mice, right? But also when you track human behavior, pretty much the same. So what does vitamin D have to do with opioids? Okay, well, that's what the researchers tried to find out. Now, in an evolutionary sense, we've been pre-programmed to seek sunlight. On the surface, you might think, why would that be? I mean, after all these years of evolution, wouldn't we want to avoid sun since we know that direct sunlight exposure can be carcinogenic? Maybe we shouldn't be seeking out the sun. Maybe we shouldn't be sun worshipers. I mean, people love it, but maybe we shouldn't be. So why, from an evolutionary sense, would we have been drawn to the sun? And the answer is, you know, thinking about how the climate of the earth has changed over eons, maybe it's because in order to make vitamin D, you have to be exposed to sunlight. And vitamin D is essential for absorbing calcium. So calcium means you build strong bones. So therefore, it would be beneficial for you, the cave person, to seek out the sun, to make vitamin D, to make strong bones, so that you, your bones won't snap when you're running from a predator and then become a victim, right? This is one of the pathways under which some people suggest that vitamin D can affect implants because without vitamin D, you can't absorb enough calcium and therefore there's not good bony homeostasis and therefore that could lead to early dental implant failure. But while that all makes sense, when you think about it, there's, I, I don't, I'm, again, I'm not aware of any study 
that actually pushes that forward. There have been some anecdotal reports, but I, I want to see a clinical trial. I want to see something like a study that's been conducted, like in this case, by an institution to give me some clue as to if that's true or not. Okay, so I get that we're drawn to the sun from an evolutionary standpoint. However, that can go to the extreme. And you and I both know, I'm sure, people who like to worship the sun. They like to be out in the sun. They like to sunbathe. They like to go to tanning salons. And so what the researchers in the study discovered was that that kind of behavior is very similar to the type of behavior that people exhibit when they seek opioids. So is there a, a correlation between the two? So in lab animals, when there was induced vitamin D deficiency, and then those lab animals were given opioids, their response to the opioid was stronger. And so that meant they were likely to become more, uh, more addicted to an opioid. When they reversed that vitamin D deficiency with supplementation, the response to the opioid wasn't as great, meaning there may be less likely a, you know, a chance that they would be addicted to an opioid. Okay, so let's try humans. And, and what do we find? We found that, that, that the behavior is very similar. That uh, otherwise, if you were to treat vitamin D deficiency, what you'd find is that patients with modestly low vitamin D levels were 50% more likely than those with normal levels to use opioids. Whereas patients who had significant or severe vitamin D deficiency, they were 90% more likely to use opioids. So now, of course, you follow along here. If vitamin D deficiency leads to you using opioids, then is the converse of that true? If I supplement vitamin D deficiency, can I prevent opioid use disorder or at least you know, offset it or, or avoid it? And that's what I think more research has to be done on. It seems like that's, that would make sense. But again, I'm that guy. I like to see something in, in from a study that actually proves it before I just go ahead and say it. I know that a lot of dental practices are advocating for vitamin D screenings in the practice. Um, I would assume mostly for wound healing and maybe periodontal disease and potentially that relationship that you mentioned for dental implants. Can we make a conclusive conclusion if we were to provide vitamin D screenings in our dental practice? Well, we could make the argument for screenings and for vitamin D deficiency and, and use that as a criteria perhaps uh, for whether or not we'd want to prescribe an opioid. One of the key things we talk about when we prescribe opioids is, does the patient have either now or previously an issue with substances, including opioid use? Uh, because that's a, that is a great criteria for us to determine whether or not we would prescribe more opioids. So if you have a previous existing history uh, of opioid use and, and opioid misuse, we probably wouldn't want to prescribe you an opioid. So now, can we make that same correlation and say, well, you have a history or you have currently a, a vitamin D deficiency. I'm probably, as the clinician, not going to prescribe you an opioid because I'm fearful that since you're vitamin D deficient, you are likely to be more uh, uh, addicted, let's say, or potentially addicted to this opioid that I'm going to prescribe. You can make that statement, but one of the things I like to point out, at least in dentistry, is we tend to get by with our get out of jail free card, which is three days, right? We tend to treat pain for three days only, 72 hours. And while there's no data to suggest otherwise, it seems like three days may not be enough time to become addicted to an opioid. However, that all depends on the patient's previous history with opioids and their potential addiction to other substances. So yes, I think vitamin D would be a great thing to screen for in the dental practice. I think it could open up uh, new doorways for us as far as what to expect from patient behavior. But until now, of course, every study ends with the same thing. You know, more research is needed. So until we get that next, next level of research to determine that for sure, vitamin D supplementation would actually offset opioid uh, abuse and, and use and addiction, and that vitamin D normalcy, if you will, normal levels of vitamin D uh, would, would predict that the patient would not respond adversely to the opioid. Until we actually get that data, we're just going to have to assume that it's something that's, a, that's valuable information, but not necessarily a guideline or standard. Until we get more data, we just know conclusively that we behave very similar to a lab mouse. And evolutionarily speaking, we're still cavemen. Right. And we're still sun worshippers. Yeah. At the end of the day. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, I hope you enjoy going to the beach this weekend, because when I go, I'm going to have a whole new 
group of things to be thinking about. Yeah. I'm going to make sure I put on plenty of sunblock, but not too much because I want to make some vitamin D. So take exactly. that. Exactly. All right. Well, you enjoy. I'm going out in the sun. And everyone, I think we solved another or we touched upon another medical history mystery. I wouldn't say this one's solved. We need more information as we move forward, but I can't wait to see you next week. Same here, Pam. Thanks so much for everything. Take care. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you.